ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Trisha. We are sketching together today. Um, <clears throat> normally, right before live streams, I generally will look to the comments and see um, what people are suggesting. But I think at the end of the class last week, we had the suggestion come in that we should do longhorn beetles. And I definitely, definitely agree. Longhorn beetles are one of the things I very much love. And to show you that, I figured I'd pull my longhorns out of my collection. And not just one. I figured I'd pull out the unit trays. So, let's see. All right, so up here in the, the top, these guys, they're going to be lo the larger Prianus beetles. Those are going to be from the American Southwest. They're going to be, well, these guys are from Colorado and Utah and Arizona. Um, uh, this is the Pisandrini. This is the longhorn beetle that actually has short horns, which I think is kind of funny. Um, we've got the cactus longhorn beetle that you can find in Arizona feeding on Choya. Uh, well, I find it mostly on Choya, but people say that you can find it also on prickly pears. Um, then we've got a variety of smaller longhorn beetles down here. The ones to note would be the, the red with the six spots down here. He's a milkweed longhorn beetle. Some of you may have seen those guys out in the wild. If you've spent any time around milkweed looking for, looking for monarchs, you've probably seen the milkweed longhorn. And you also have, right about here, that's going to be the longhorn beetle that's under the microscope right now. And that is one of the goldenrod longhorn beetles. Um, has a name. The locust borer. And then, I have three more that wouldn't, that wouldn't fit in the big tray. <laughs> Amy has seen the milkweed longhorn beetle. That's cool. Yeah. When I was, um... When I was little and I didn't know what they were, you know, as a, as a young child, you just start making up names for things, right? And so I called these squeaky beetles because if you pick up these, those milkweed, the, the milkweed longhorn beetles and you hold them to your ear, you can hear them squeak. They stridulate, um, so they, so they pass their abdomen against the bottom side of their elytra and they make it squeaky, 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 squeaky noise. Oh, hi, Jody. I look forward to being on your TV. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, something that happened to me in the last, um, something that happened to me in the last week was that BioQuip got me my, the, my final order from them. So I was able to get all of my drawers and all of my unit trays. So I went through and reorganized my whole collection this week. So that's been a blast. Uh, a large percentage of my collection is beetles, as it turns out. <laughs> All right. So after looking at a variety of these beetles, we could do um, one of the larger Prianus beetles. But to give you an idea, if we were looking at one of the bigger Prianus beetles under a microscope, it might take a minute because they're so large that... Um, we would have to look at it in very small pieces. Or we could do, we could pull out and we could do um, the locust borer or the milkweed longhorn beetle. Um, the other one we could do, these guys are really cool. Let's see. And I don't remember what subfamily of longhorn beetle they are. Sometimes it's easier to get my bearings by looking at them. There they are. So these are smaller, um, smaller longhorn beetles, and they have these really interesting hind legs where they are knob, they are kind of knobbed, so you can see that they're wide and they kind of get thin. Um, some longhorn beetles will even have elytra that are. Um, that are kind of narrowed. Um, this longhorn beetle here, its abdomen comes out to a point too. That's kind of a fun little characteristic. So, um, 
I'm curious if anyone has a suggestion as to which one they love, or we're probably going to go with the uh, Milkweed Longhorn Beetle, because that's the one that people have seemed to mention so far. Yeah, the colorful ones are neat and easy to draw, so black and yellow. There's also this one. I don't have a name. I don't have it identified much. The red and black one? There's a little itty bitty bit of a lag between um, between when I talk and when you guys see the video. And so when you say I like this one, I'm not sure which one. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Mini, 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 mo. We'll do the milkweed longhorn beetle. Hey, maybe we'll do more than one. Or the unidentified colorful one. Ooh. See, I do like... I do like that one. The red and black one. Alright, we'll do that. And then during the sketch, if um, somebody who knows longhorn beetles just a little bit better, maybe the subfamily or genus, we might be able to get this guy identified, but um, I find him beautiful. Alright, so um, this is as far zoomed out as I can get on my microscope, so what I'm going to end up doing is um, pulling him off of my microscope to get his, um, to get his measurement. Oh, hey, I'm on my drawing. I'm going to move up a little bit. There we go. All right, so our specimen, I'm going to measure from the head to the end of the abdomen. So I'm not going to include the length of the legs and the antenna afterwards. But you can see that um, both of his antenna are um, about maybe even time and a half the length of his body. They are pretty long. Our longhorn beetle looks to be about 1.9 or 2 centimeters long. Maybe he's just shy of 2 centimeters. <clears throat> Alrighty, so um, longhorn beetles are all in the same family of beetles. They're all cerambicids. So... Serendipity, um, and so we've probably. Let me go ahead and turn that auto that auto focus off. My computer likes to automatically turn it on every time I restart my computer. There we go. That's much better. Now, um, our longhorn beetles are in the family Serendipity, and all longhorn beetles are going to be in this family. Um, there's a couple of characteristics that they all, um, that you can say most of them have. So most of them, they're called longhorn beetles because they have long antenna, right? Um, so that's going to be one characteristic of most longhorn beetles. Um, there are a handful of species that have shorter antenna. Now, the other thing that is characteristic of all longhorn beetles is that they have um, reniform eyes. So they have eyes that are shaped like a kidney bean, and um, those eyes will actually wrap around to the base of the antenna. All right, so I know that a lot of us like to get um, a zoomed out kind of overall sketch of our beetle before we get started so that you know where we are on the insect. Um, so let's just go ahead and zoom out a little bit and I'm going to give myself also an idea. 
So I'm going to start up here near the head and give myself just a half circle. And I'm going to come back. I'm drawing really light. I'm going to come back and, and, and finalize all these lines. I just want to give myself an idea of um, the size of everything and make sure I don't go off the paper. I've done that once or twice in a live stream before. I'm sure some of you have seen me do it. All right, behind the head, we have a pronotum. Um, you can go ahead and draw mostly like a, a, a rounded rectangle. Uh, this species of longhorn beetle does have two nodules off the edges of its, of its pronotum, so you can see it's kind of horned on each side. Um, then the, uh, the elytra, or the first pair of wings, comes off of the pronotum very shoulder-like. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit so that we can see um, the shape of the end of the abdomen. So when we're looking at it, you can see that the elytra will actually stop just a little bit before the end of the abdomen. So these are the elytra right here, the first pair of wings. And then right here, that little extra bonus little bit, that is the end of the abdomen. So I'm going to go ahead and give our beetle a nice long pair of elytra that do match evenly in the center. Sometimes they'll, sometimes they, they don't. Um, then a little itty bit of bit of an abdomen. And that's going to mostly fit my guy on the page. My legs and antenna might go off just a little bit, but that's going to be all right. So I've got my overall light sketch done, and we can go ahead and start zooming in on stuff. Checking out features. I don't like that I'm floating in the grassland. Let's see. All right. So one thing I really love about um, Serambicids longhorn beetles is their diversity just in their head and their pronotum area. So if we were to just scroll around and just look at the heads and pronotums of longhorn beetles, there's an incredible diversity and crazy like they'll have they'll have different spines on their pronotum they'll have like different shaped mandibles some of them will have very very sharp spines there's cool colorations and wild hair colors like our longhorn beetle here between his head and his pronotum has golden hair look at that All right, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit on this head so that we can check it out. It has these really pretty golden golden hair band between the head and the pronotum. This is where the eye starts, so this is the compound eye and the base of the antenna. And so you can see it starts here, it wraps around the side of the head, and if I zoom down a little bit, you can almost see that this is where the eye comes back. So it comes in this like C shape or this reniform shape. Um, and we can't see the mandibles from this angle, but I do want to show them to you before we get started. So I'm going to go ahead and switch our mount around a little bit. Cool. All right, so you can see from this way, you can see the bottom side of the compound eye, and these are the mandibles. Um, some, so longhorn beetles as immatures will feed on rotting and decomposing wood. Um, even, and some longhorn beetles, uh, I guess will also feed on living trees. So the beetles will lay their eggs and the grubs will bore down and they're wood borers. So they're feeding on the phylum and the, the xylem and the phloem of the uh, of the tree where the nutrients were flowing between the roots and the leaves and that's where they're going to feed and get nutrients um wild thing about longhorn beetles while we're talking about them 
I'm going to get sketching on this head. But um, wild thing about longhorn beetles is that they have the ability to sense, uh, to sense heat. Um, between their... I can't remember if it's the first and second pair of legs or the second and third pair of legs. So on the underside of their thorax, um, they actually have have little heat sensing organs that will that as they're flying through the forest they're checking wood to see the temperature of rotting logs and they will uh and they will lay their eggs they know what stage of rot a log is in based on the temperature and that's how they know where to lay their eggs because their babies only like one or two stages of rot they doesn't it can't be too fresh or too overdone. And so um, that's something that's kind of cool. Like an adaptation that um, scientists use, you know, we're trying to figure out how how they're able to be so successful with this, like, um, infrared or heat sensing abilities. It's pretty cool. All right, so we've got this head. It's got those golden... Um, I'm going to go ahead and just give us this kind of basic shape that looks like two parentheses. And then I'm going to add, probably right about here is where I'm going to add the base of the antenna. And then the, uh, with longhorn beetles, I generally don't draw the antenna until the very, very end because they're so long and they're going to go over a lot of different parts. So for me, it's easier to draw like all of the legs before I have to worry about going in and around antenna. So I'm just going in and adding these compound eyes around the base of the around the base of the antenna, making sure that they come most of the way back to the pronotum and then all the way around. I crosshatch inside of the eyes to give them texture. And then we're going to go over to the other side. So we give it kind of the base of the antenna where you think the antenna are going to be connected down onto the head. And then you got your reniform eyes. A lot of times when I'm sketching the eyes, I will go ahead and um, push them out just a little bit further than the edge of the head. It gives them a little bit more distinction away from the body. And a lot of times the eyes, eyes do bulge at least a little bit away from the head. All right, so I'm going to leave those antenna there. Um, you can go ahead and give yourself like a, a couple of smaller pieces and almost some mouth parts, but they're really hard to see from the dorsal view. So if we want to actually draw the head of a longhorn beetle, we'll just go ahead and draw one off to the side. <coughs> All right. Um, I don't believe that longhorn beetles have ocelli, but we can always look. Nope. So these longhorn beetles are not going to have simple eyes or ocelli like we've seen on a variety of other insects. A lot of times we, we were seeing those on hymenopteran, bees, wasps, ants, and then every now and again some, some true bugs. Or I guess a lot of true bugs have ocelli. All right, so um, this is what our pronotum is going to look like. It has a variety of, um, I guess we're going to call them bumps. There's a better word for it. I just can't think of it right now. So this, the, the uh, separation between the head and the pronotum does have a little bit of a, a little bit of a black band here. It does look like the surface of a strawberry. And I think if we zoom in, we might even see little hairs, like strawberries will have um, little hairs. Let's see. Yeah, look at the little hairs. Oh, that's fun. The closer you get, the more it looks like a strawberry.
So someone's gonna eat my longhorn beetle, right? Uh, that's a good one for your nature journal for the reminds me of. Reminds me of a ripe, fresh strawberry. I'm going to call them nodules. That's what I'm going to call them, these bumps. Um, so they do have some kind of nodules or sharper points along the edges of my pronotum. They are even and parallel on each side, so trying to make sure that they come off at the same spot, left and right. And um, you can always go through and add, I, I sketch in black and white, like most of you, um, if you've been here before, you know that I sketch in black and white. But if you're doing this in color, giving it all of this, um, all of these strawberry textured um, red would be really cool to see on people's sketches, right? I might even go back in and just shade in and darken the head a little bit to say that, hey, this is definitely a darker and different color than the rest. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So my head's darker and comes down to this red. Cool. Yay! All right. Um, and then moving back to the elytra. So the elytra are only on beetles, right? They're the hard outer shell that beetles have. It's also their first pair of wings. And generally, in between the elytra, right here, so this is the end of the pronotum, the left elytron and the right elytron. Um, and there is, it's very small, but there is a little itty bitty triangle right here. That's our scutellum. <clears throat> Beetles will have it um, right here in between the elytra most of the time. Um, this is a very, very small scutellum in comparison to some others. Wow, and look, the, the elytra even have um, the little hairs for the strawberry texture are even more um, prevalent, I guess, in the elytra. You can see they've got the little yellow hairs. All I want to do now is like spritz it with water. I feel like with a couple of little water droplets, you could convince somebody that it was a strawberry. I'm going to have to play a game with people. I'm going to have to play the game insect or food and find a bunch of different insects that um, that you could say also looked like food. All right. <laughs> oh. So, um, in between the elytra, you have the scutellum. Make sure that that um, falls right along the center line. And it's going to be a very, very small triangle. You saw when we zoomed in. It's not fairly obvious, but it exists. And we should let it, and we should let it exist. Now, coming out and giving our, our longhorn beetle his shoulders... And I'm just going to go ahead and um, finalize these lines down. I'm also going to darken out that black area on the top of his elytra right here. I'm going to come in and give him... going to give it a little bit of coloration. Man, if that was green and not black... You could almost convince somebody that it was a strawberry leaf. All right. Um, the you are going to have a um, a vertical line that separates the elytron, so that comes down this way. Awesome. And then finishing up, I want to make, ooh, or 
<laughs> or both, Akshay. <laughs> um. All right, poll in the uh, poll in the chat. What type of insects have you eaten, and were they cooked? All right, so there is a little bit of narrowing at the end of the elytra. That's what I was zooming back here to check. So it doesn't stay wide and come down shouldered like some do. This one um, starts getting narrow a little earlier and, um, and comes down pretty steep. And then it is flattened at the very end. But we're just going to give it a little bit more shape than I was originally giving it. There we go. And then we have the tip of the abdomen. The last, the last abdominal segment shows past the elytra. And there is something out there called a... Oh, man. It's a type of key. not called an illustrated key. It's a key where you, you check off characters. I'm going to have to look it up and come back to it. You know where you were thinking about bringing something up all day and then when you do you forget the word? Darn it! Um, yeah, so one of the characters, I believe, to subfamily um, is that uh, whether the longhorn beetle's abdomen shows past the elytron. The elytra. It looks like Akshay has eaten uh, definitely cooked crickets. <laughs> and moths during moth night. I get that. They just fly into your mouth. You can't help but eat them. <laughs> and yeah, I love that. That you just ate the ants because they ate your food. So you're like, I'm just going to eat you now. That's what you get. I love that. All right. So when we are looking at when we are looking at the tarsal claws or the tarsal formula for longhorn beetles, um, we're gonna call the number of tarsi apparently four four four, where it's actually five five five. Um, and that is because sorry, I was reading your guys's chat too. And that's because it does have a very small segment that a lot of people don't really see. It's not apparent to people. So. There's one segment that I'm not able to get in focus. Okay, that'll that'll work. I can turn it, um, and I can turn it from the side if it's easier for you guys to see. Um, but if we're counting the tarsal segments from the base up to, up to the tibia, um, this is one, and then there's another small itty-bitty segment that's not apparent to people, and it's right here in between the lobes. That's actually two, three, four, and then five right here. So you can see that this up here is going to be its first tarsal segment, and if people were just zooming in and checking its toes, they might say, all right, it has one, two, three, four four segments and call it a day. And there were so many scientists skipping this little itty bitty segment right there that now we've pretty much gotten rid of it from the keys. People will say, even though the, even though ceramicids will have five tarsal segments on every leg, they will call them apparently four, 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 because 
you can't see the last one. <laughs> and I love that. Um, you know, because science is generally so specific, right? And they're like, it's this number or this number or this size with measurements and things like that. And then you run into longhorn beetles and we're like, well, they actually do have five five tarsal segments, but it's apparently four, 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 so we're just going to do it that way. <laughs> oh. oh, man. I'm wondering if the aphids tasted good. <laughs> Close enough, apparently. Yeah, exactly. I love it. And I laugh every time I see it on a key. I'm like, apparently, 444. Four, four. Guys. <laughs> uh. So we've got the femur. Man. The femur is going to come off of the, come out of maybe the middle of the pronotum. I'm going to change the focus so that we can see the leg a little better. Yeah. We got a good shot of the toes. There. Huh. So like a pasty version of the cabbage they were eating. That's interesting. I was wondering if they almost tasted sugary, but you're saying they tasted almost pasty. Like they added a little bit of like a flour type of coating to your cabbage. And I guess that also makes sense. Aphids don't have a very hard exoskeleton, but they do have, um, they do have... Bloop, bloop, bloop. They have a waxy coating on the outside of their body. So, um, so that could almost give it a weird texture. Let's see. One segment, two segments. The third segment is bilobed, right? There's two, lo one lobe on each side. The fourth segment is the little itty bitty one that people miss and forget about. The sad segment. This is the loneliest segment. Um, and then you've got the last one that gets the tarsal claws. All right. So I've got my first pair of legs taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out, see if we can look at the middle legs and the hind legs. I like the way that this I like the way that this beetle is pinned. I can see all of the parts from above without turning it sideways. All right, so our second pair of legs is still on the thorax. Keep them, keep that in mind. We're not in the abdomen. The abdomen probably come, starts about here. Uh, this, the, what you see on the top are its wings. All right, so we are going the femur. And then... The tibia, coming back in a little bit. And then all of the tarsal formulas are the same in longhorn beetles. So you can just keep that same shape in mind. Um, uh, two like rectangular to triangular shapes. You've got the bilobed shape, the, the lonely shape, and then the teardrop with two tarsal claws. All right. And then our hind leg is going to look like it comes out right about here also. So I'm going to start it about here. Yeah. And if I was going to put some color on my elytron, I would probably start it right about here. Yeah. 
My um my longhorn beetle might be happier a little narrower. I might have made it a little a little obese, a little a little wide. I think it should be narrower. All right, we're going to fix this real quick. Better. I like it. All right, so we've got the first, we've got the middle leg, adding the hind leg. And I believe that the tibia on the hind leg is actually pretty long. Yeah, the hind leg is also connected to the thorax. So all three legs are connected to the thorax. And we'll turn it over so that you can see that. On the legs, do the hairs always point forward? I'm not exactly sure what you mean about the hairs on the legs. Um, so let's zoom in a little bit. Now, a lot of the hairs along the leg are going to go kind of the length of the leg. So the hairs grow from the base of the leg and then away towards the tip. Um, our legs also have tarsal claws, um, and the first pair of, well, his tarsal claws are blocked by the hind legs. Um, yeah, so the hairs run along the length of the legs, yes. Um, they are not generally going to go, they're never going to go in the opposite direction. Never that I can think of. Um, then we also have tibial spurs that look a little bit like thicker um, or stronger hairs. You can see those right here. At the end of the tibia, this guy has tibial spurs. So we've got the femur. We have the tibia coming out, the second joint. And then a lot of times the tibial spurs will be on the inside of the body. So they're going to be on this side. Um, I have a theory about that because these spurs, I believe, are going to be used mostly to kind of clean themselves. To They can bring their legs up and run those spurs along their body to help knock things off. Um, so your spurs are going to be towards the body for that purpose. The first segment of the tarsi is triangular. Then we've got more of a rectangle, two, a bilobed one, the little itty bitty one, and then the raindrop with the claws. And yes, if we are drawing hairs to give texture, they always, the little itty bitty hairs run along the length of the legs. Alrighty, so um, I've got my left legs taken care of. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add the left antenna, and then I'm going to draw different things, I think, over here to the right. Maybe it's head and some maybe bonus features. We'll see. So um, when I'm drawing longhorn beetle antenna, because their antenna are so long, <laughs> Um, and it's almost, and it's difficult for me to keep the segments running smoothly along a line, especially because as you'll notice, these, um, this longhorn beetle, it doesn't have a lot of segments, right? So if we were to count the segments on this antenna, we've got the base one and then a small one, right? One, two, but then three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
There's about 11 total segments on, um, there's about 11 segments on this antenna. So they aren't, there isn't like 30, 50 segments. So when we're sketching them, it makes it a little more difficult to keep it in line. So I'll show you my trick. Um... So is the location of the tibial spurs a characteristic feature? No. Um, generally, it, the, the tibial spurs are going to be on all longhorn beetles and on a bunch of other beetles. So they're not going to be characteristic for the family. Um, I would definitely say if we were saying, uh, if we were trying to define characteristic features for a longhorn beetle, we would be talking about those um, those reniform eyes, the big chewing mouth parts, uh, but the big chewing mouth parts are on a bunch of them. Here, give me a minute. I think I can grab this, but m the reniform eyes is definitely one that, that stays in my mind, and the very, very long antenna, obviously. All right, so for my antenna, as I'm, I'm gonna sketch these really quick while my, while my document is loading. Oh, it loaded quickly. Look at that. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, long antenna and notched eyes. And I guess the, the tarsal formula, the, um, the apparently 444 tarsal formula is going to be characteristic. Um, that uh, tarsal formulas are characteristic in many beetle families. So for my longhorn beetles, I know how many segments I have and I know approximately how long I want those antenna to be because they're starting at the beginning of my beetle and they arch around and they end pretty much at where my um at where the back tarsi end so i know that that's right about here and i'm gonna take a nice smooth line in between the end of where my antenna should go very lightly just a single line and i'm gonna go all the way to where i think that the antenna should end all right, and that's going to be my center line. That's going to help me keep the antenna in check. Um, keep in mind that each segment stays straight, right? The segments cannot bend, but in between the segments, they can move, right? So one segment can't fold, but between two segments, they can bend and move. Oh, elytra. Elytra is spelled E-L-Y-T-R-A. Does it help you guys if I label parts on my insect while I'm sketching it? I go back and forth about labeling my my specimen because I can just I can communicate the pieces that I'm drawing, um, and then I'll end up with a cleaner sketch because it's not labeled. But if it is important for you guys that I label it, I definitely can. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give that first segment that's nice and wide, the second segment that's kind of flat and skinny, and then I believe we counted a, um, nine segments outside of that. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So the rest of this line gets evenly split into nine pieces. I guess I could have made my segments even a little bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I did it right. Eight, nine. Oh, man, that's great. Okay, so um, we have nine segments, and if it goes over any legs, just make sure to go back and erase those. And then I'm going to go in and darken these segments so that I can 
see them and that they show up on the sketch, make sure that there is a little bit of separation between every segment, right? The next segment's always just a little bit smaller um, than the last one. And then I'm going to go back and erase that center line that helped me keep all of my segments straight, but now is just in the way. Awesome. So I have my serum bisset. It's all sketched over here on the left. I'm going to go ahead and um, shade in this dark patch. I never went back and shaded in. Um... So I'm just going to go ahead and give it a little bit of color. Okay. Um, and I think we should... Yes, labeling definitely helps. Ah, the center triangle. All right, so I'm going to go ahead go back and label some stuff. The center triangle right here, this is called the scutellum. It is S-C-U... T-E-L-L-U-M. Scutellum. Um, this segment right here, it's the first segment of our thorax. This is the pronotum. We talk about the pronotum in a variety of insects. Um, like in cockroaches, the pronotum grows over top of the head and covers the head like a shield. Um, or in grasshoppers... Uh, in pygmy grasshoppers, the pronotum actually grows backwards and protects the wings. Yes, I can zoom out and check out the entirety of the antenna again. Although this is as far out as I can zoom. So we've got the head. Let's see. Maybe I will show you the back half of the antenna this time. And the other thing that I can do is I can take my longhorn beetle and put it over here so that you can see it. I might even be able to... I wonder what would happen if I put it up on a shelf. It can almost get in focus. It's too close. Yes, tree hoppers have amazing pronotums. True. I am um, I love tree hopper pronotums. Um I have 3 species in my collection. Um, and actually for the last Sunday class, I did a class on all of the different types of hoppers. I did tree hoppers, plant hoppers, leaf hoppers, and frog hoppers all in one class. That was kind of fun. I wouldn't mind doing it again for you guys if you would like. I'm going to go ahead and refocus this down so we can see my sketch. Mantis shields are pronotums. Yes, the the shield on the back of a pro, of a of a mantis is the pronotum, um, and the uh, first pair of legs is connected to the pronotum. It's just the first segment of the thorax. Oh man, we have yes please hoppers. Okay, so we'll have to do hoppers next week. That sounds fun. All right, so then we have elytra. Um, the segments on a leg, if we were going to, if we were going to label the segments on a leg, or at least the ones that we talk about frequently, the, um, the leg segments have very similar names to human bones. So if you know your skeletal structure, it will help you just a little bit. Um, the first segment of the leg in between essentially the hip and the knee is the femur. We also have a femur. It's the bone in between our hip and our knee. <laughs> um, the bone between what looks like the knee and the foot is the tibia. 
And then insects have tarsi, where we have metatarsals, right? So our toes are considered metatarsals, and, um, and insects have tarsi. And individual, and a single, and a single, you can also say a tarsal segment. So tarsi is plural with the I. Alrighty, I think down here I have enough space to go ahead and zoom in and sketch that head, I think. Um... But you guys are the Thursday class, so I will, so I'll redo things that I did for Sunday for you guys if you would like, if you ask, because um, I redid, for instance, I redid honeybees for them one week, because I had ta taught honeybees to you guys, but they were like, I want to see honeybees, so I'm down for um, showing you guys whatever insects you're interested in. Um, when I, t I finalized the organization of my collection, and I still have things that I have to pin and spread up and identify, but right at this very moment, I have something like 486 specimens in my collection that are identified and um, labeled and set up. So that's kind of cool. I was kind of excited to have a number. I've got them all database now. All right, so I'm going to zoom in on this head because, I don't know, it might just be me, but I kind of love longhorn beetle heads. I know, Jody was here on Sunday, too. <laughs> oh, I love that. You can follow me around. It's all right. It is a lot of work. Um, but I absolutely love it. I actually pulled an all-nighter this week playing with bugs because I looked down at the clock and it was 1 a.m. And then I was like, I really need to go to bed soon. And then I looked down at the clock again and it was 5 a.m. And I was like, now I, now I don't have time to sleep. <laughs> All right. So we are sketching ahead. <clears throat> so, um, I'm going to give myself... A little bit of uh, this rounded edge up on the top and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give myself kind of this oval shape maybe it's gonna get a little bit narrower at the end I'm trying to give myself an overall shape to work within so that I don't end up running it over the edge and it looks like we're closing in on a shape that's gonna work so it looks like we've got a rounded, yeah, I like this. I don't know how to describe this shape. Sorry, guys. It's almost 11. Yeah, something like that. Um, it almost looks like a human skull, actually, kind of wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. That's going to be my overall shape that I'm going to work within. Um, I am going to change the focus just a little bit. I want to pull it up some so that uh, we can see. Yes, that's much better. I just wanted to see more characteristics in the mouth and in the antenna. Um, so... Right here in the center is where the where the nodules for the antenna start, and then it's gonna go on both sides. So you're gonna have a character that looks something like this, where they're gonna kind of darken at the base and get wider, and then that's where they comes off. And we've got antenna, and we've got another antenna on this side. All right, so we've got antenna, and then we have eyes, and these um, reniform compound eyes go out and around the base of this antenna, and that's why we have this wider at the top shape, is because we have to take into consideration where these eyes are. All right, so we have 
eyes on the edges. And then what we really could do is we could just create a line underneath the eyes. That's going to be the end of the head. That's right about here. And I'm going to zoom in even further so that we can see the mandibles. So Deborah, it is a lot of work to keep an insect collection, but um, I would say that it's something that I've been working on for years. Um, I think that my oldest specimens are from 2009, so it's been a collection that's been growing for about 13 years. This is not every, every specimen I've collected in 13 years. I actually um, only have a handful from back then. And I have mostly recollected my collection in the last three or four years. Um, last year, I drove across the country and collected every night. All right, so if you've hung out with me enough, uh, you'll know that I call these guys down here mouth fingers. <laughs> they're labial or maxillary palps, depending on where they're connected at, um, at the base. I believe that the top ones are the labial palps and the bottom ones are the maxillary palps. Um, you can see that really, really pretty golden hairs along the mandibles. I think those are really cool. Um, right here, there's a little rectangular segment, and that's the upper lip. That's the labrum. All right? It's just small and rectangular. It goes from here to here. These guys that are really dark and shiny and black, those are the mandibles. Those are the sharp, sharp points. And those are the bitey bits, right? <laughs> those are the parts where you don't want to get bit by. And honestly, he has not, he doesn't have very scary looking mandibles. They're not, they don't have huge jaws or points anywhere. They're smooth and then they're f almost flat edged. So his mandibles may not be as scary as some others are. I'm trying, oh, the, it's the angles in the other direction. That's why. Yeah, that's better. Right. Okay, so then we have the labial and the maxillary palps to take care of, which are these little segmented guys. Those are going to help my longhorn beetle eat. Um, they also kind of wave around at the front, so they're also a, a sensory organ. They help kind of feel around what's in front of them. We got golden hair. I'm just doing a little bit of cross hatching inside of these eyes to give them some texture. No ocelli, no simple eyes, but that's about what our head looks like. Yeah, I absolutely love it. So that's our longhorn beetle. Now, um, if you give me two seconds, I believe. There's a part of me that believes that I have taken pictures of this longhorn beetle in the past, which means that I might have identified it to species, but then didn't put a label on it. Um, sometimes that happens in my collection where I'll go and I'll spend time with a specimen. Aha! Uh -huh. I do have a species on this guy. You ready? It's Cassidious, Cassidious Coralinus. I will spell that for you. I'm going to erase their emicity. I'm glad I thought of that to, to check my Instagram. So I use this specimen as a guess that bug. And if you haven't played with me, um, you should follow my Instagram and play some guess that bug with me. The... Species name is C O S S I uh, D I U S Cassidius, and then the epithet is Coralinus C O R A L, like coral, and then Inus I N U S Cassidius Coralinus. All right, that makes me happy. Uh, there are beetles with, um, there, there are beetles with simple eyes. Um, what are they? I can't think of 
have them off the top of my head. Hmm. I can't think of any that for sure have Oselli right off the top of my head. That makes me sad. But I do believe that some have them. Yeah. They're, they're prominent on hymenopterans, bees, wasps, and ants. They're also prominent on hemipterans. Some of, a lot of the true bugs will have them. Um, not as many beetles. But I believe that there, I, I have to believe that there are some with Ocelli. Dermestid beetles! Dermesta beetles have Ocelli. That's your answer. Okay, so we got the Cassidius Corallinus longhorn beetle taken care of. This red guy with the black on his head and the black on the elytra. We got his head taken care of. That makes me happy. Um, now, we have some choices. We could pick another beetle to sketch its entirety of. Or... What we could do is I could pick some fun beetles that have cool um, mouth parts, heads, and pronotums, and we could we could just sketch head and pronotums like this guy. Check out, let's check him out. He's awesome. He has a really really cool antenna too. Um, this specimen was collected in 2010 in Utah. Oh, Mount Carmel Junction. I love Mount Carmel Junction, guys. If you're out there in Utah, um, I would definitely suggest checking it out, especially if you're a bug lover. Um, it might be one of my secret spots that is not so secret now that I've told you, huh? All right, I'm going to angle this specimen just a little bit so that we can see its eyes and its get the red dot out of the way. My laser pointer. <laughs> Check out that guy. So, um, this beetle, lucid key. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the word I was trying to think of earlier. There is a longhorn beetle lucid key that helps you identify down to subfamily and then down to genus. Although um, I'm still working on, I'm still working on getting small pieces of it to work together. Um, but once I figure it all out and I'm doing and I'm running my lucid key smoothly, I wouldn't mind live streaming bug identification. All right, so checking out the head. So the pronotum on this guy is really cool because he has three very prominent lateral spines on the edges of his pronotum. But then he also, it almost looks like he, well, he, some of his, some of his uh, labial pulps broke off, it looks like. Um, but if we can zoom in, yeah. We can also zoom in on the mandibles. Which may prove to look kind of wicked. Let's see. Oh, he's got a little stash. <laughs> look at those. I love that he has a little patch of CD, a little patch of hairs. See, longhorn beetles are one of those beetles that are not going to bite you if they're just walking around in the world. But if you pick them up, they will turn their head and try to bite you. That is something they'll do. And so um, being really careful when you are collecting these guys is important because they are huge, but they also have an incredible ability to fly. So even though they're big and they look like they would be kind of heavy in the air, they're not. They are very, very talented fly, um, flyers. This one is cool, too. So this one has a fun pronotum that's slightly different than the last one, which actually means that they're different species. All right. So um, <clears throat> if we're looking at if we're looking at this longhorn beetle, 
our pronotum isn't three spined. This spine up here on the top has a double spine. And I believe there's a double spine down here in the bottom. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And I believe the mandibles on this guy are really, yes. They are, they're double pointed and they also fold over each other. Look at that. So we've got this spine here that comes up and then comes down. So we've got this kind of double jagged spine. Very, very cool. All right. Um, thank you, Akshay, for hanging out with me. I'll see you next Thursday night. Um, super appreciate. I hope you had a great time on um, VK. All right. So um, this is where you guys you guys lead the program. So I we can sketch heads and pronotums, or we can pick another whole buddy to draw. Okay, so Amy says, regarding the milkweed beetle sensing heat, how many bugs can do that? Also, if they lay eggs in rotting wood, what do they do on milkweed flowers? Yes. All right, there is a couple of questions there. So, um, the milkweed longhorn beetle, this guy right here, All right, bye, Jody. Have a great night. All right, so um, there is a little bit of confusion, so I figure I will clear that up. Let me check my factoids really too quick. I don't believe that the milkweed longhorn beetle grub... Yeah, all right, so... Um, there are two different types of, well, there's probably a variety of different types of longhorn beetles because they, there are, you saw in my collection, there's a huge variety of them. So longhorn beetles like the milkweed longhorn beetle and the cactus longhorn beetle, both of their grubs, instead of feeding on rotten wood, are going to be feeding and, um, and burrowing in roots or in plant material. So the milkweed longhorn beetle, um, the milkweed longhorn beetle will actually lay its eggs either on the leaves or on the plant of, on the milkweed plant. And then when the eggs hatch, they'll fall down to the ground and they'll dig down and they burrow inside of the roots of the milkweed plant. And then they will emerge as beetles and the beetles will feed on the leaves. Um, so with milkweed longhorn beetles, they don't need their heat sense their heat sensing ability. Um, when I was talking about the heat sensing ability, I was um, trying to talk about um, all, like all longhorn beetles. Most long, but I guess it would have to be most, right? So most longhorn beetles, like, let's see, like, um, uh, you know, most of, most of these longhorn beetles are going to be feeding on rotten wood. So when, so their heat sensing ability is going to be more important. Um, and this guy right here, he definitely burrows down into wood. He has that very, he has that shape. Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, the red one that we were drawing is Cassidius corallinus. Sorry about that, Amy. I didn't mean to cause confusion. Um, yep, yep, yep. So the one that we sketched was Cassidius corallinus. Um, it's got these very large eyes, and it's a burrower. Um, our milkweed longhorn beetle is interesting in that I think its genus name is Tetraopes, meaning four eyes. So if we zoom in to see, here's me and here's me and longhorn beetle heads. Um, if we zoom into the head of a milkweed longhorn beetle, 
instead of having two reniform eyes like most longhorn beetles have, <clears throat> milkweed longhorn beetles and um, compound eyes are actually split in half by their antenna. So um, that's why they're called four eyes, tetraopes. They've got a small little piece of its compound eye on the top of its antenna, and then down here under the antenna, there's another little small piece of its compound eye. Let's see if I can, if I put it even more on an angle, we might be able to see them both. There we go. So those are the compound eyes of my milkweed longhorn beetle and its pronotum. So four eyes, one, two, three, four. Um, its mandibles are down about here. They're sharp and pointed. You can see its labrum or its upper lip here. And those are its palps. All right. I think... All right, um, I think I am getting a little bit tired, and I think that we have gotten a really cool view of a variety of longhorn beetles. Um, got to check a handful of them out under the microscope. Um, the one thing I wanted to talk about was the lucid key, because I forgot to talk, that because I forgot its name. So... Um, in insects, you can key out or identify insects in a variety of ways. A lot of people will use a dichotomous key, right? So in every choice, you've got two choices, A or B, one or two, prime or no prime, however you want to call them. And then you follow that through the key and you end up at a species name. Bye, Naira. I'm thinking I'm going to be heading out soon, too. I just wanted to finish this lucid key description. So that, um, so one way you can do is dichotomous key. Another way that you can identify insects is through something we call a lucid key, where instead of there being a track to follow, you just have a series of characteristics. And you can click and unclick the characteristics as you'd like. So it says, so you can pick a region, then you can pick a color, then you can go ahead and pick a tarsal formula, and it, as you're moving throughout the key, it'll be unchecking and checking different boxes behind the scenes to tell you what species you have. And then you can go through and you can sort all of the different options. And that's how a lucid key works. And there's a really good lucid key for longhorn beetles that's free and available out there on the internet. So if longhorn beetles are something that you're interested in, I would definitely suggest checking it out, especially if you just wanted to, like, look at cool pictures of longhorn beetles, because you can check and uncheck the boxes and look at their pictures, um, which is also a fun thing to do in your spare time, right? <laughs> All right, so I just wanted to say thank you, ladies and gentlemen, so much for hanging out with me today. Um, <clears throat> like I mentioned during the live stream, I do have, um, I do uh, post pictures on Instagram. I call them Guess That Bug, where I go ahead and post three pictures over the course of the day. Two of them are close-up images, like a, an image of a head or an image of the stinger, and then you can go ahead and try and guess what the insect is. You can guess to order, like, oh, that's a wasp, um, or that's a beetle, or you can guess a family. You can say something like, that's a, that's a paper wasp, or that's a ladybug. Um, if you want to get even more particular, a lot of them are identified down to species. So you can go ahead and try your luck at guessing the species from two close-up pictures. It can be a little difficult, but it's a lot of fun on the long run. Um, I teach kids classes. I teach a class called out. I teach on out school. So, if you know anyone in the nine to twelve or five to eight year old age range and want to hang out with me and talk bugs every week, you can check out school out. I've got the description down below. 
Um, I'm on YouTube. Subscribe. Click the little notification bell so that you know when the next one is coming up. Um, it'll drop you notifications and tell you when I go live. And there's definitely a possibility that I'm going to be going live for black lighting nights coming up because I want to go black lighting and I want to bring you with me. Um, and then last but not least, if you've really, really enjoyed, um, my live stream and you want to support me and Insectopia as, as a business, as a way to, uh, spread our love of bugs, you can go ahead and, um, and tip me or buy me a coffee. Super, super appreciate it. And, um, as this is what I like, I like and love to do for a living. So, um, thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me today, and I look forward to seeing you next Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, you can also go ahead and dive bomb the Sunday class. I also am going to be around on Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, I will see everybody around, and I'll be floating around in the comments for the next 10 minutes or so, just in case you have a buggy-related question that I can answer. All right, have a wonderful week. Bye.